All right. Hello, everyone. We are so happy to have you all here with us today. We've got a great crowd with us. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Andrea Peliquin, and I am the events manager here at JW Pepper. Virtual choirs have become incredibly popular since the pandemic began. However, the work required to record and compile one can be difficult and labor intensive to the point that people don't even want to try to do one of these things. However, some innovative publishers have come up with ways to make this whole process easier, which is why we are here today. Adam and Matt Pod, better known as the Pod Brothers, have created virtual choir kits with several of their choral pieces containing everything you need to put a project together, including the recording rights. So without a lot of preparation, you and your singers can create a virtual choir recording for your next virtual concert that will impress everyone. Adam and Matt are here today to walk us through how to create a virtual choir using their kits from the initial planning through to the editing and final recording. We'll also have time for questions at the end. So we hope to prove to you that putting together a virtual choir is truly easier than you think. A quick note, we will be recording this webinar and a link to the recording will be sent to everyone who registered tomorrow in case you missed something or want to share it with any of your colleagues. So a few housekeeping announcements before we begin. Type any questions you have into the Q&A area and we'll either answer them as we can during the discussion or we'll save them for our Q&A segment at the end. We added an upvote feature to the Q&A panel. You'll be able to see the questions coming in. And if you have the same question, you can click the thumbs up sign next to the question to signal your interest. That way, you won't have to type it again. We'll answer the most popular questions first. The chat window is basically for us to talk to you if we want to share anything. So you won't be able to type anything in there. And you're all muted automatically. So asking questions in the Q&A box will be the best way to communicate with us. Finally, you're going to be asked to complete a brief survey when you leave the webinar. Please take a moment to give us your feedback. And if you have any ideas for other topics you'd like us to take on in future webinars, please let us know. If you're watching this live, you'll be getting a link to a certificate of attendance in the follow-up email tomorrow. Simply print it out and add your name. You don't need to request this separately. However, if you're watching this video later and do need a certificate of attendance, email me at events at jwpepper.com and I'll send one out to you. So let's get to it. I am proud to introduce today's presenters. Adam and Matt Pod are Vermont-bred, Brooklyn-based music directors, pianists, composers, and arrangers. You may know them from their virtual choir video of How Can I Keep On Singing with the New York City Virtual Choir and Orchestra. And you can see that on the slide right here. This video went viral on YouTube and it now has almost 650,000 views. So they clearly know what they're talking about with virtual choirs. Collectively, they've worked with some of the top artists and organizations in their field, including the Boston Pops, the National Symphony Orchestra, the New York Pops, Barbra Streisand, Renee Fleming, Jason Mraz, Adina Menzel, the Young People's Chorus of New York City, and the Brooklyn Youth Chorus in such venues as Carnegie Hall, the Kennedy Center, Jazz at Lincoln Center, Broadway theaters, and others. In addition to their work together, Adam and Matt also continue to pursue their individual freelance music careers. Adam directs music at First Unitarian Congregational Society in Brooklyn, and Matt directs at the First Presbyterian Church of Brooklyn, where the choirs often help them develop and premiere their newest works. So Adam and Matt, welcome. We're so glad to have you both here today. Thank you for having us. It's great yeah, to be great. here. Great to be here. You, before we get into the demo, tell us a little bit about how you guys got into this, because clearly you're performers and you've been doing this for a long time and also directors. How did you get into creating all these virtual choirs? Yeah, the I mean, the short answer is probably the same for almost anybody who got into creating virtual choirs, which is I led a real choir and then we weren't allowed to meet anymore. And so we had sort of no choice. We had sort of two choices, virtual choirs or no singing. 
Um, and so for the two of us, we ju started jumping in right away to the virtual choir thing once the stay at home orders and the quarantining began. And it was for anyone who's done it before, even if you haven't done it, you probably understand at this point, it's a ton of work. There's a ton of stuff for the director to do. And even as people who felt pretty well prepared on the technology front for taking that on as a challenge, I mean, we were we were working on a lot of these things together and we were just remarking to each other like, gosh, this is like a huge chore. And it feels like that everyone's doing this at the same time. There's, for all we know, a hundred choir directors out there making guide tracks to the same song right now, like this redundant overlapping work that feels inefficient at best and uh, like a waste of time at, you know, or worse. And so we wanted to figure out a way to give people something to make something sort of more collective that people could use to get off the ground um, as opposed to everyone just on their every every man for himself every director for themselves and good luck hope you make something great and so we, we decided to take our kind of technology expertise and our own obligations to make these for our own choirs and and try to sort of brainstorm and develop a bit of a product um, or a platform that makes it so not everybody's going through that same um, experience of like starting from nothing and how do I do this? And one of those biggest experiences um, that felt like it could be distilled and maybe uh, reused more was the, the directions to the singers. Like even if you have all those materials communicating with the singers and like it feels like this endless checklist and kind of monumental emails that you're sending with how to deliver files and uh, how to set up your shot and should the camera be vertical or horizontal like there's a lot of redundant emailing from one project to the next where you're writing this really impossibly long email and on my third or fourth one of those emails that I was writing to my own choir I was like we gotta we gotta boil this down and gotta be a uh, better way <laughs> spend less time doing emails <laughs> we can all spend less time doing emails yeah it kind of started Amen. as like can we, create, can we create a template for ourselves if we're if we're um likely to repeat this process over and over for however long this the quarantine lasts if i have a choir that expects to sing a bunch of times can we create a template just for that choir and i thought like well why stop there how about create a template of the instructions at the very least, and hopefully even more for other people to use who don't want to, who shouldn't have to write the same email that I just spent hours sort of crafting and trying to take all the extra information out of so that somebody could ever bear to get through it. So that's that's really <laughs> like where the idea came from, like selfishly make my own repeating workflow easier and then less selfishly, like let's get it out so that everyone can benefit from this because we're not the only ones putting in all, the, all this time, obviously. Every, everybody being expected to do sort of new heights of their of their virtual uh the virtual choir expectations are just kind of going all over the place for people yeah yeah definitely and i and we've seen this through from pepper we've seen a, a couple different publishers come out with different kits like this that all have different versions of the same kind of things in them so this is going to be great um today we're definitely talking about the kits that you guys put together but at the end of the webinar i'm going to share a link to um some other the other kits that we have available on our website in case you know, people want a few other options, but anyway, this is going to be great. I'm so excited to, um, to have people do this walkthrough with you. So I'm going to turn it over to you guys now and let's see where we go with this. Great. So yeah, in order to, um, sort of bridge that gap, I was talking about of people who've never done anything like this before conductors didn't used to have this in their job description, create a virtual choir or learn how to do audio and video editing. Um, so in order to bridge that gap for those conductors to something that felt a little bit more realistic to of creating a virtual choir, we, uh, well, we first we want to start by create by kind of all of us who are here today establishing a bit of an understanding about what it what you sort of need, um, what are the non negotiables in creating a virtual choir, and whether those are coming from whether those are done by you or somebody else there's, there's a bunch of variables that will be different from from one project to the next and then there's a handful of stuff that's just every virtual choir project needs these things to be created somehow by somebody um, and so we're going to go through that list now and please don't leave during the presentation of this list this is going to be a bit of a daunting uh, to-do list as you'll see it piles up but we promise that there's some good news on the next slide. So for any virtual choir project, um, you need to choose repertoire that lends itself to 
virtual performance. Not just any uh, choral octavo necessarily is a good fit for virtual choirs. Um, some it, basically sort of the more conductory moments that they have, the, the, the less straightforward they tend to be for people recording themselves remotely, not in the same room as each other. So think like fermatas and rubato and lots of like uh, nuanced phrasing and pushing and pulling of the tempo, that kind of stuff tends to be tends to complicate a virtual choir performance and the sort and in a certain respect the more musically straightforward probably the more successful especially if you're doing this for the first or second time um, you need to acquire the uh, the sync licenses for these things this is a bit of a whole other can of worm that i know they um, pepper has already had a webinar on copyright issues with virtual choirs and virtual singing but for any um choral octava that you buy the, enough copies of for your singers and the, and depending on the publisher and who holds the copyright of the piece you need different licenses to post these to youtube and facebook and wherever else you're going to host your video um, you need to record the accompaniment track for this uh, for this piece if it's accompanied by piano someone's got to play the piano part record it and use that to synchronize all your singers so of course you somebody can hear the accompaniment and sometimes that's its own video you see the accompanist and sometimes it's just a backing track for your singers to record um what's next oh we have the guide tracks of course this is kind of the this is sort of the north star of all the singers they all need to be using one thing to unify their performance if you just told everybody sing this arrangement of shenandoah and sing it send it back to me and you sent them no guide materials you'd get it at 100 different tempos and 100 different keys and people would be drifting all over the place even if you gave them their first note so you need a guide track which sort of acts as your conductor the guide track obviously it usually includes the accompaniment and at least their voice part um, that so if the tenors are going to sing they're going to have the guide track that, sh that you hear the accompaniment and somebody either singing or plunking out the tenor part and this is if they're singing along to that then they'll be in time with what you hope is the ultimate um, kind of guide for the everybody will everybody will have had the same guide length and tempo so they'll stay in sync with each other even though they're all doing it at different days and on different times after the guide tracks, you need to deliver all of the above recorded materials to your singers, the score, the, good, the guide materials. You have to actually get that to them somehow. It can be a little easier said than done, emailing large attachments. We've all been there. And so these audio files somehow have to make it into the hands of your singers. Next, um, then we have the instructions. As we already kind of talked about, this is sometimes the most painful part is laying out all these detailed instructions, how to record yourself. These singers haven't done it before. Even if they have, they need pretty specific handheld instructions, what to plug their headphones into, make sure that we're not hearing the accompaniment coming back through when you're going to make your recording. Um, and how to light your shot so you can actually see your face and how to frame it so it's sideways and not vertical. All these instructions, whether you're doing it, uh, your first project with a single choir or the tenth, you really can't skip them. They, people need this checklist to remember all the things. Turn off your turn off the fan that's in the room that's making a humming sound and all those little details. It's just a ton of checklists that it feels like you're trying to deliver to your singers. And no matter how concise you try to be, this can get lengthy and sort of uh, tiresome to put together and to read. Then you've got to collect the, the singer videos back. Once they've done their part, they've sung, hopefully uh, they learned their music and they sung their part, they have to send you a video and you have to collect all these videos from however many singers you have. And that again is can be easier said than done, but that's the job of some central place to get these videos back. It's not enough for everybody to record. Somebody needs to go around and collect those files digitally. And then last but certainly not least, the video and audio editing. This is really, I think what people think of as like the whole thing, like the whole hard part where you have all the videos already and you have to put them all together. Um, you have to put them all on the screen and make it into a grid of some sort so you can see and hear everybody. Um, so the assembling and synchronizing, making sure they're lining up with the guide tracks, all that stuff happens after everybody's recorded. All right, Adam, I'm going to stop you right there before anybody does actually leave the presentation. <laughs> um, so we, it is a lot. We think of this big list as the bad place. Um, and we're hoping to show you how to get to the good place by avoiding starting from scratch. 
So as Andrea mentioned, publishers are addressing this burden to directors and they're creating virtual choir kits, packs, bundles, they have some different names, and it's all meant to sort of lighten this load. We'll get into the details of what our kits include, but regardless, we do just suggest that unless you have a project that demands it, that you don't start from scratch. Or I guess if you're really passionate about pre-production, making guide tracks, if that's your jam, then do your jam. Um, but we think that it's a really good idea to not start from scratch if you can avoid it. And that's what we've uh, tried to accomplish with our kits. So the next slide shows you what is left on this to-do list once you get a Pod Brothers uh, virtual choir kit. All publishers handle this differently, but here's the good news. Um, with one of our kits, all of that pre-production is finished and you're really just stuck with collecting the singer's videos, which is doable, we'll help you with that, and the video and audio editing, which is the meat of the editing process. Um, and that's what, like Adam said, that's what you think about as kind of the real project is all the editing. But I can tell you from personal experience that without having all the pre-production there, you have a lot more bandwidth just as a human to finish that video and audio editing and going into that with sort of a fresh sense of yourself and the piece and you're not burnt out when you're starting the most technical part of the process. So we're gonna walk you through the video and audio editing today um, and uh, talk about collecting files, but that's what's left. Um, and uh, yeah, okay. So moving on, just, uh, for, let me butt in for one second. Yeah. I'm seeing a couple of questions come in on the Q and A, which are really great questions. And we are going to have a Q and A, uh, more sort of live Q and A, and we'll answer those, some of those after the sort of the main demo is done. Some of the questions that will come up pertaining to what we're what we're doing in the moment, we'll be able to answer live. But I don't want to get too derailed with talking about like sync licenses right now. Um, but just so you know, we see the questions. Some of these will get answered after, and if we don't if we don't answer them before this demo is done, ask them again at the end. Great. Um, hey guys. Yes. Yeah. Hey guys. Uh, I'm also working on some of these answers too. I did post uh, a, our link to our copyright blog for virtual concerts in Great. the chat. And I'm also posted it to several people's questions. It has a lot of information about sync licenses and all the other kind of things you need. So uh, be sure to check that out just so we don't get too much in the weeds in the copyright stuff. Perfect. And I do want to address, uh, so remind me, Andrea, I do want to address somebody's asking about creating an audio only version and do you need a sync license if you record your own accompaniment? And that's a really great question and it just requires a bit of a longer explanation. So let's definitely yeah. get to that one afterward. Sounds like a plan. All right, thanks. Great. So now that you know sort of what's left um, with one of our kits to do, I want to start by giving you a quick look inside one of the Pod Brothers kits um, at two of the most powerful tools that we provide that's just meant to make life easier. Obviously, the whole kit is meant to make life easier, but these two tools, I think, are really uh, unique to our kits and really helpful. Um, so this is going to be an example of one of how our guide tracks work. Like Adam said, the guide track sort of becomes your conductor. Um, the guide track has to have the audio that they're listening to have their part um, and our guide tracks include a scrolling score along with the recording so that individual uh, along with the recording of an individual voice part so that your singer can hear just their part and learn and record their music with their eyes up and their hands free so they're not juggling music and devices and holding things they're just watching a guide track video that shows them the music and plays just what they need to hear. Um, it's literally as easy as watching a YouTube video because it is. We've included the directions to clap at the beginning of the track, which if you haven't heard about that yet um, from seeing other virtual choirs, a lot of uh, production involves clapping to sort of create a sync point for your editing. If that seems confusing right now, don't, don't worry about it. We're gonna explain it in the editing process later, but we've taken care of all of it with the guides. So the material to learn and record your music is just all sort of wrapped into one thing where the singer presses play on a video, they're looking at music and hearing their part. And better than me talking about it is you just hearing it. So this is the bass guide track that you're about to hear for the Hallelujah Chorus, which we have made a kit for. This is not an original Pod Brothers composition or even an arrangement, really. This is a this is just handle being handled, but we've we've packaged it in our kit form so that you can kind of see how this works. So here's the bass guide track. Hey there, get ready to clap on beat four. Here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Hallelujah, 
Alleluia, alleluia. You get the idea. Great. And if you're wondering, no, that's not us singing. Um, those are some much better professional singers that we happen to be uh, lucky to work with here in New York. So the other powerful tool we want to give you is just a sneak peek of before we get into a more full demo of beginning to end the whole virtual choir piece uh, is what you're seeing now. Uh, we've created these uh, the set of PDFs that sort of take care of most of those instructions and the communicating between directors and singers. So what you're seeing now is just a sneak peek of the singers PDF. The singers get a set of directions that tell them everything they need to know. You can see here, it tells you how to set up your camera, um, tells you to learn the music, set up your camera, record your, your video and send it back to your director. So that with step-by-step -step directions, making it super clear the whole way. And of course the organizer or the conductor, which is likely you, has their own PDF that tells you when to send this PDF to the to the singers um, in what order to send things out, get things back and put them together. Basically, so you don't have to remember what you need to remember. You have a list of things to, to do and in order. Um, and that just kind of helps do, like I said, all that communicating that tends to be sort of overlapping and redundant with the last virtual choir you did. It's just in a one package PDF that you just send to your singer and then they can get off and singing basically. Um, let's see here. So now for the actual demonstration, you've seen just a little bit inside the kit. We want to we want to walk you through start to finish making a virtual choir using a Pod Brothers virtual choir kit. It would be similar with another virtual choir kit, but of course the the, the specifics of what these kits offer, as Andrea and Matt have both said, are different. Some have the accompaniment only. Some have guide tracks. Some have instructions. Some don't. But using our kit. We're going to take you through this start to finish. So for the sake of this demo, uh, Matt is going to be the choir director of <clears throat> your choir, <clears throat> and we will get started. And Andrea, this would probably be a good uh, good point to like start to keep an eye out for questions pertaining specifically to the order of operations in the demo here. If anybody asks something that we're missing as we're trying to keep our, our script and our uh, presentation straight, feel free to butt in. All right. All right, will do. So, Adam, I've got just my document shared, right? I'm doing yep. this right. Okay, so I'm the organizer, I'm the director. Let's say that I've picked the piece that I want to perform with my virtual choir. So the way our kits work is they're all, you know, individual pieces. So you buy the, it's like you're buying sheet music, but instead of just getting the sheet music in the mail, you get the whole virtual kit. So I've purchased There Is More Love Somewhere. You and you title. don't get it in the mail, you get it downloaded yeah. instantly. That right. da instant download, not in the mail. Um, so th there's more love somewhere is the piece that we're going to be working with today. It's a spiritual. Um, this is the organizer's document. Um, and it's the step by step directions um, that you're going to use to basically get your project off the ground right from the beginning. Um, in addition to a step-by-step -step directions for organizers, as Adam's outlined, you get different step-by-step -step directions for the singers. So you send them just what they need to see. They don't need to see all any of the behind the scenes stuff. They just get their directions. These PDFs have everything you need to get started, including the most important part, which is links to your music. So that, that guide track that you just saw, they are linked in these PDFs so that you're not sending big attachments. You're sending a PDF that has a link to a YouTube video. Um, and the YouTube videos are all unlisted um, so you can't go find them without getting your kit. Uh, so anyway, here's the organizer's document. I want to take you through it just so you kind of have a bird's eye view of everything involved here. Um, and then we'll get to the singer's document in more detail later. So uh, as the organizer, it shows you that your four main steps from beginning to end of this project are to communicate with your singers, to collect their videos, to assemble that into a final project, and then share it, put it on YouTube, send it out to your choir, however you'd like to share it. Um, right on this document, you can see in the bottom right corner here, um, there are links to the guide track videos. Uh, that's obviously for your reference. Um, you should be able to access the soprano guide or the alto guide. Um, these links are more prominent in the singer's materials because it's really like most of what they need are links to their guide tracks, but they're obviously right here for you to reference as well. Um, so I'm going to scroll down to step one, which is communicate with your singers. 
the most important thing you need to do to, to get that communication off the ground is send them the step-by-step -step directions for them. Um, so you have your document, they need theirs. So you're gonna put an email together or however else you communicate with your singers that has an attached PDF. Um, you've gotten the PDF as part of your kit. So you'll just reattach it to an email, say, here you go choir, here's the directions for this piece that we're doing. There's more love somewhere. Um, in addition to those directions, you'll need a deadline from you. We did not go ahead and set deadlines for all of your projects for you. So that's the one thing you need to provide is a deadline and a method to collect the files. Um, so that means if you have a way to collect uh, all the videos from your singers, whether you're using Google Drive or Google Classroom or Dropbox, um, you'll have to put those directions to your singers because we know that that can vary pretty widely um, depending on the group and even the number of singers. So uh, step one is just get that email off to them with everything they need, um, especially that document that has links to their music. Um, so once you've done that, you're sort of done um, until the singers are done recording. That's It's really just getting that out the door to get the music started. They get their documents, they click the links, they start singing along, learning their music, um, and the directions for them to record are all, are all right there. Um, your second step, even though it seems like it's you know, far away, is just collecting the files. So as I said, this can vary um, a lot based on your group, your organization. We outline in the document how to use Dropbox file request. We think it's the easiest, best way to do this, um, but a lot of people have their preferences. So Dropbox file request is like a lot of other cloud-based um, file management where it lets you collect all of the videos from your, your singers uh, pretty easily and all in one location. That way, when you're trying to put them together, you've got them. So this lays that out in a lot of detail. So if you're interested in using Dropbox file requests, we've got you covered. Once you have all your videos in the same place, your next step is to assemble the video if you're doing it yourself. Um, we, we outline here some different options for video editing, including hiring a professional. Wouldn't that be nice if we could all do that? Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. Um, asking around, getting help from colleagues. But of course, obviously the DIY uh, solution is here, which is what a lot of you are here to do. Um, so we, we have a do-it-yourself version, including a link to a YouTube. So this picture of Adam here is a thumbnail of a YouTube video that we've already made that shows you video editing from beginning to end. So you can pause it, rewind it, um, you can really take it at a snail's pace so you could just kind of have it walking along every single step of the way. We're going to get through all of that today, um, but obviously it would be helpful to have a video that can walk you through it when you're actually making your video. Since this is not a hands-on walkthrough, it's more watching somebody do it and then trying to remember, oh yeah, how did they handle that part? So we've got the YouTube video with the video editing um, all, all uh, laid out for you. And then step four, it's a, hardly a step, it's sharing your video. It's the fun part, sending it to your friends or putting it up on the school website or sending it out to your church congregations um, or including it in your church, uh, in your Zoom worship services, however you're planning on sharing this video. So those are the four steps. Um, the big one is number one, and let's start right there. So let's say I've sent my email uh, to my singers. I've included their PDF. So I've said, hey choir, here's the document that we're, that has all of your directions and your materials for There Is More Love Somewhere. That's the song we're using for this kit. Um, uh, here's the deadline for when I want you to record by. Here's the Dropbox link for how to give me your file. And uh, ready, go. And then, then you're done for a second. So I'm gonna stop my share and sort of pass the football to Adam where he's gonna sort of receive this email, be the singer and walk you through his next step of the process. I love a good sports analogy. Um, Oops. Oh. We were always great at sports, weren't we? Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure people could predict the answer to that. Um, so as the singer, first thing I gotta do is check my email. So I'm gonna check my email and I have here this message from my choir director that says, hello choir, here are your materials and directions to participate in our virtual choir performance. Your deadline is February 27th. Attached, you will find a document called Directions for Singers. These are all the instructions to walk you through the whole process. Yada, yada, yada. Once you're done, submit your video to the Dropbox file request link below. Happy singing. Uh, it also says, PS, I'm taller, just yeah. so the audience can see that. Not true. So I'll download the video. 
uh, sorry, the video. I'll download the PDF. And then I'm going to go ahead and open that PDF up. Make sure you can see everything I can see. Okay. So as a singer, I get a similar looking title page and then my overview of the steps that are mine to do are different. I have to learn the music. I have to set up my camera. I have to record my part and then I've got to send it back to the conductor. So step one, learning the music. This can look like a lot of different things for different choirs. Our kit, of course, packages those guide videos, those guide video tracks for you, um, which are gonna serve two purposes. One, to help you learn the music and secondly, to help you to record, to be listening to as you record your part as your actual guide, as your conductor. So if you are using a hybrid model in your school and you have some in-person learning and some um, virtual learning, then you can use these kits to supplement that. Uh, you can actually still have a choir rehearsal where you teach people the music, remember that. Um, and then you could also have a Zoom rehearsal. Some people are doing Zoom rehearsals where they plunk out people's parts or break, do breakout rooms with sectionals. Our guide tracks can kind of just exist to aid in those other rehearsals if you have them, or they can be a standalone kind of rehearsal free process um, for, especially for like groups that are repeating a bunch of, doing a bunch of virtual choirs. You might not need to do the, all the part plunking and part teaching. You might just say, oh, here's your next guide track. Send me the video back when you get a chance. Um, so I'm the singer, I get to pay the step one, learn the music, and all I have to do is click this link here, which will open up my guide track in a new web browser. So it opens up the guide track here as a YouTube video. Um, what, instead of us watching this together now, as if we were all the tenor, I think it would actually be a little bit more of an engaging and meaningful experience for each of you to get a chance to open up a guide track. You're the singer now. Your director just sent you all the links that you need, all the documents you need to participate in this virtual choir. So Matt's going to paste into the chat voice uh, links for each voice part of this arrangement. And we're all going to take three minutes now to go listen to that um, that guide as if you are learning the music from it. Again, we're not we're not acting as if we're recording our parts yet, just using this voice part guide as your learning tool. So you can get a sense of what it feels like to have the scroll and score go by, hear another singer singing your part and um, enjoy making music for a second this afternoon. Go look, click the link and actually sing along, go through and see what it would be like to be on the receiving end of this information. And actually before they get off to do that, I wanna just clarify one thing. The links that I put are for individual parts, obviously, but every piece also comes with a, what's called the full, uh, full choir guide track. Um, so that's when you can hear the, all the parts together. Some choirs prefer to sing with that. It feels more like you're in the choir um, and you can hear more of the context of the piece. Um, so the individual parts here only have the part specified, but there is a link that has all parts um, that is included with each piece. So uh, go off, do your singing, and we are going to meet back here in two and a half to three minutes. Um, but really do like to take it in, listen to the music and see what this experience would feel like. The links are in the chat if anybody can't find them. They're not in the Q&A section. They're in an, another window, which is the chat. So they should have come from that pod. I also just threw them in the uh, Q&A as well, although that'll get buried, I think. Or at least I think I did. Oh, may, maybe you did it only to panelists and not panelists and attendees. You're muted. Yep, I am a Zoom novice trying to figure that out. All right, everybody, we'll get those links to you in just a second. All right, I'm going to stop my share here. I've 
unfortunately, I'm actually not on Zoom all day, every day. So I still am kind of bad at it. Panelists and attendees. How'd that work out? Great. Here we go. OK. Sorry about that. So all now right. go be a singer. Seeing a few people still having trouble with the links. Um, were some people able to click the links that Matt put into the chat? Did it work for most of you? I was, says, able, I was able to do it. We're OK, where it says Soprano and then a YouTube link, Alto, then a YouTube link. Yeah, it's, they should work. If they don't, maybe it's some probably an issue on, on the user. And, and if it doesn't, you're not missing like much <laughs> in terms of like what you're going to, you'll be able to follow along with the next step of this in about one more minute. So. So um, you're just getting a sort of a longer preview of the guide track, kind of like we showed you with the Hallelujah Chorus. So this is just for the actual song we're working on instead, and you get to pick your part. We'll give maybe 30 more seconds. Oh, great. It's working for like a lot of people. I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> get a little caught up on the, the the couple of glitches all right how are we feeling should we move on Yeah, I think we could just go ahead. Great. So in theory now, your singers have all got their materials and they've learned their music. So now if I'm kind of representing the singer experience now, I've learned my music. And the next step that I have to do is uh, as you scroll through the singer document says, set up your shot, number two. So this is going to be setting up my camera and getting ready to actually record my part and we're going to walk you through, or I'm going to actually demonstrate doing that as Matt walks you through this document here. So Adam's actually going to change his camera angle and set up a, a real 
Singer shop for you um, while I show you what's in the Singer's directions here. Um, so these are the directions your Singer get that say, once you've learned your music and feel ready to record, you need two devices to make your recording, a guide device, which is the computer or tablet, there's his, and a recording device, your smartphone. You will also need, oh, there's his phone, great, he's ready to record. You will also need headphones. Um, there's lots of questions about headphones. We get into that because which device do you put it in and make sure that the recording is only picking up the sound of your voice. Um, this is really, honestly, this one page of this PDF, um, which you're welcome to take a screenshot now, will already save you an hour of trying to figure out how to put this into an email and give you the give you the directions that you need for your singers because it's just a new process for a lot of people and there's a lot of stuff to remember. So um, step one, set up your guide device. Set up the guide device at eye level so your gaze is natural while you record. You may need to stack books or use a dresser. It's gonna be sort of the hard part actually getting the computer high enough because you don't want the, the virtual choir video that looks like this or like this, you need it to sort of be at a- Music stands work great if you have one. Yeah, if they're not too rickety, because they can also <laughs> send your laptop onto the floor. <laughs> uh, so you set up your guide device at a good height, connect your headphones to the guide device, very important. Um, and on your guide device, cue up the guide track video that you plan to sing along with for your recording. So for Adam, that'll be the tenor part of There's More Love Somewhere. I'm not sure he's exactly a tenor, but he'll give it his best shot. And then, and then the second step is setting up your recording device. So I said there's two devices. Um, the recording device is the phone. Uh, you wanna set it up as close to your guide device as possible so that your gaze is close to your camera. You frame your shot using the device's front facing camera. That way you can just tell if you're actually in the shot and you've got good lighting, good framing, all of that. Um, and get it close to your guide device. You can see on this document, I have a little picture here of uh, my homemade tripod. Instead of spending 20 or $30 on uh, a little desk stand tripod, you can make one out of a cracker box. Like this can be done pretty cheaply, assuming that the devices exist. Obviously these devices are not cheap, um, but a lot of people have them or can borrow them. You may even have sort of a buddy system if people need to share devices. Um, so here is a, uh, the picture of this setup down here and you can see Adam is handling his beautifully. I think he's going to open up his window to get some natural light in there. Oh yeah, there we go. That way his face will be lit up. He won't be backlit. I um, remember the the recording is coming from his device. So the angle we're seeing is actually not the angle his camera is taking. All right, his device, he's all set up, ready to go. He's got his guide track queued up. So now it's just making the recording. He's learned his music. He listened to that YouTube video a dozen times. He's got his tenor part down and it's time to make the recording. Um, this is kind of the easy part once you're all set up and ready to go. It's just taking a video on your phone, which most people know how to do. But if you don't, um, we have the directions here. So it's making sure that your phone is set to record video. You press record and then you press play on your guide device. So you have that YouTube video up, you just press play and the sound starts. He's hearing it in his headphones, we're not hearing it. Um, so it's gonna give him directions to clap and then he starts singing the tenor part. So here comes the clap, two, three. Clap. And then it goes through what you already hopefully experienced on your own already, which is to, um, play the musical introduction, it says ready, set, sing, and then you hear just your part. For the sake of time and for my personal dignity, we're not gonna all sit here and watch me sing this a cappella right now, but let's just assume I did a beautiful job with the tenor part, and let's even further assume that I've successfully sent it back to Matt, the organizer. <laughs> Great. Um, I just also want to point out on the page that's still up on the screen um, that we do have a, a lot of great little tips for making your singer's videos turn out well, which is the layout and the orientation, getting good lighting, canceling noise that you have control over, like fans and uh, children, things like that. Um, and to just get your enthusiasm to show through the camera, because that, believe it or not, even that doesn't come naturally when you're home alone rather than with surrounded by your section and with your section leader and looking at your conductor. So uh, let's assume that he did send me that file and it's uh, and let's assume that all of my singers did, okay? So that my direction email went out and I've collecting all these files back. Um, for this demonstration today, 
Um, we've uh, gotten some files back from some friends of ours that have worked on this arrangement for us. So I will be using a Dropbox folder full of their videos. Um, I'm actually not going to use Adam's video. He didn't really make the cut for quality of uh, the quartet that I'm putting together. Sorry, Adam. Um, but uh, we're pretty much ready to do the real video editing part now. So um, this is where the video editing begins. We're gonna walk you through the whole process. But like I said, there is a YouTube video already dedicated to this, walking you through the same process. Adam's gonna paste the link to that in the chat. You can watch it as many times as you'd like, as slow as you'd like, pause it, rewind it. Um, but we're gonna show you all the, all the basics right now. And then if you need sort of a refresher when you're putting your project together, uh, the resource is there for you. And that YouTube video is included in the kit as well. Um, it's, it's easy to find. So uh, right. as and I open up my video software, Adam's gonna introduce it. Yeah, so the software you're, Matt's going to open up to get started on the actual assembly and editing is called We Video. Um, and we know that people are using lots of different video editing um, platforms to get this done. People are using DaVinci and Final Cut and Premiere. Um, and obviously we had to pick something. We couldn't make uh, tutorials out of all of these programs, but we chose WeVideo for a few really good reasons. One, it's, cross, it's cross-platform. Mac or PC, anybody who's on a computer now watching this could in theory be using the same software rather than having to do this twice, one for the PC um, crowd, one for the Mac crowd. Um, secondly, WeVideo kind of amazingly and magically exists in a browser. You don't actually install the software onto your computer. So think about the way you open up um, like Google Docs, for example, instead of Microsoft Word. You just need to have a link to the right web address and you're now editing your video in this software, which is pretty amazing. Um, and what it also allows for is collaboration. You could start a video project and then your friend could pick up, if you give them the link, uh, where you left off, or you could even start it on your school computer and finish it on your home computer. That kind of stuff can be um, a real drag trying to trying to bring video project, actual editing projects in Final Cut or Adobe from one machine to another. And so that's a huge advantage of WeVideo also. If and anybody's there's... familiar with Soundtrap, that's an audio software that works the same way. That might be sort of a way to wrap your head around it. Soundtrap exists in the cloud for, it's like GarageBand in the cloud. Yeah, Soundtrap and BandLab are sort of the audio versions of this WeVideo type of uh, type of software. And then lastly, it's priced very affordably. Um, there's not a lot of free software out there, but WeVideo is getting close. It's a subscription-based model. And as of last check, when I looked this morning, it was eight bucks a month for a regular Joe Schmo user like me. Um, the There are different pricing models for nonprofits and for education. And I'm actually going to put a link in the chat now that takes you to the main WeVideo site and to special pages they have set up for nonprofits and educators. But um, you can get it for a month for eight bucks and you can cancel your subscri subscription once you're done with your project or you can keep it ongoing. Um, and it works great in schools. A lot of schools have school-wide licenses for it. Your school might even have um, something already set up for that. And for the school pricing, it gets like ridiculously cheap where it's like $10 or less per student per year. So you can have students um, doing some of the video editing, having, having them put their own quartets together, for example, or some kind of student projects that involve, involve video editing, whether or not they're virtual choirs, and that can be a good solution to those types of things and stuff that students could do from home or actually do as homework if they have a computer at home and then, do, and then pick back up when they get to your computer lab or your classroom. Um, so is that everything I need right. to say about WeVideo? Yeah, let's just get into it. Great to do the share. So here is the software. Um, first thing I'm gonna, this is the dashboard. So if I've already have a WeVideo account, um, this is just sort of, I, you can see some projects I've already worked on here. I'm gonna create a new video. Oh, actually, I'm also gonna turn on my little pointer spotlight, this blue circle so you can follow my mouse. Um, so I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna create a new video here. You just choose where you want to save it. It sort of lets you organize things in folders within WeVideo. And I'm going to click Start Editing. So let me give you a quick tour of WeVideo. The bottom half of the screen right now is sort of the workstation. This is where you're going to drag your clips and edit your audio and basically piece it together here um, 
doing any trimming or moving, um, deciding how many singers you're using, and all of that work happens in the bottom here on these different lanes. You can see this is an audio lane, this is a video lane, this is another video lane. When you created a new project, it automatically set up three tracks here, one's audio and two are video. Um, if this is feeling already confusing, it's gonna be more clear when I start putting content into this area. Right now it's empty. Right above that, where you see thumbnails of these videos, um, this is your media library. So this is where you will put the videos that your singers sent to you. So if you have a Dropbox that's now full of your choir's videos, you'll drag them right into this area. I've already done that because it takes a few minutes for them to get imported and to um, sort of be ready for editing, but it's super easy. Um, I'll actually, I'll drag one in now just so you can see it. On my desktop here, I have this video of Kenny. I'm gonna drag it and drop it and he's importing now. So you can see the progress bar going. So very, very easy and intuitive. Um, so then you're just gonna fill this with all of your choir's videos. So now I've got all these clips ready. The top right area, this big black box, this is to preview your movie. So as you're editing it, if you wanna watch it, which you will, um, see what it's looking like sort of as, of, as a movie, um, this is what, where it's gonna show you that. Um, it's kind of the obvious part, but it's, uh, it's worth pointing out. Um, these three dots right here, I think you can probably see that. This is how you adjust how much real estate each one of these areas is taking up. I tend to sort of be working with this throughout depending on what, I, what task I'm doing in WeVideo. Um, so I'm pointing it out in case you see me clicking on here. Um, and then lastly, and I'm going a little quick, the bottom right is the zoom feature. Um, and you're gonna see exactly why that's valuable as we start our editing. So this is how you zoom in on your, uh, on your workstation. All right, great. So let's get to work actually assembling this virtual choir. The first thing we're going to do is grab the accompaniment track, which comes as one of the four files in your kit when you get it. You get an MP3 of just the accompaniment, and Matt's going to drag it down onto what you see as that bottom lane that says Audio 1. I just clicked and dragged and then release, and it's there. And now the accompaniment is in place, and that's going to be kind of our our reference to line everything. We, we have to synchronize all the singers, as you know, um, and we're going to use the accompaniment to sort of hold in one place right there and, and line the singers up with it left to right. Now, can you maximize that window too? Oh, yeah. Okay, so once the accompaniment is in place, maybe we'll label that track just so that we can keep everything straight. Over on the left, you'll label it accompaniment or something along those lines. And then just show them how the playback works with that blue bar so that we can actually sure. hear it. Yeah, this blue rectangle right here, this is the playback bar in Wii Video. So if I'm clicking and dragging this, or you can just sort of click anywhere on this ruler area, it's gonna tell you where, you're, where the playback bar is. And then if you press play on the preview window, or if you press space bar, that's the shortcut, um, it, allows, it allows you to start hearing from wherever that playback is. So I started in the middle just to make sure that my accompaniment works, that it sounds good. If you go back to the beginning, um, you can click it back here to make sure you're starting at the beginning of the project. Great. Um, after we put the audio, uh, the, the accompaniment track in, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get some of the singers in here. Actually, no, that's, sorry, I'm skipping ahead. We're gonna create enough lanes, like that lane that we just put the accompaniment in, we're going to create enough video lanes for all the singers we're going to use, which today we're going to do a quartet. So you see that we video already started you with video one and video two tracks or lanes, and we're going to create two more so that we have enough for a quartet. Great. So to create a new video lane, this little plus button, pretty intuitive, creates a new video track. You just click add track and voila, there it is. I'll make one more, add track. Um, and then you can, of course, delete them if you have too many, but there's, there's not much harm in that. It, by default, sets you up with two video lanes and one audio lane. Um, and I'm going to actually go ahead and rename all of these video tracks with the singer's names. It's, you don't have to do that, but it kind of helps you stay organized if, while you're going. So Yeah, or you could it. do voice part names if you want to be able to tip, like look over right. and see where the alto is. For example, video one, I'll change to Ali Soprano. Uh, video two is Melissa. She's going to be singing alto. We got Jim on tenor. 
Once you guys hear Jim, you're all going to wish you had Jim in your choir. And Ben on bass. Okay. So you can right. already kind of see that we're organized, ready to go. And away we go. We'll bring Allie down onto the Alley track. All right. Meet Allie. I'm going to click, drag, release. And there she is. And then the next thing we have to do is synchronize her that's, so that she sounds like she's singing with the accompaniment. Right. She was singing with the accompaniment, obviously, when she recorded. Now we just need to line them back up. So this sound icon right here that I just clicked, it shows you Allie's waveform. A waveform is just the visual representation of Allie's sound on her video. Um, just like the thumbnail above that, where the little pictures of Allie, that's the visual representation of the picture of Allie's video. And the waveform shows you her sound. So you can see exactly where she starts singing. Um, but believe it or not, that's actually not even the helpful part to get synchronized. It's the clap at the beginning that we mentioned. So we need her clap to line up with the clap on this audio track. Listen to the beginning of this audio track. One, two, three. So that was the clap, and here's Allie's clap. Not even close, Allie, just because she obviously started her recording early. So I'm going to zoom in using the zoom bar here. It lets you make finer adjustments when you're trying to do detailed work like this. So I want to drag Allie's video to the left so that her clap, that's this little audio spike, lines up with this clap. Um, in order to do so, I actually have to trim a bit off of Allie's video. So I'm trimming, not moving. I'm just sort of sort of cutting the excess beginning from her video. So there's room to drag it to the left. And boom, it is probably pretty darn synchronized now. So let's listen to both of them now. And you'll see Allie's clap and whether it lines up. Two, three. Not bad, Allie. You've really come a long way. Um, so now I'm going to scroll ahead to listen to her actual singing to make sure that that is, in fact, uh, synchronize the way I'd like it. I'm going to skip to the second verse just for fun. There is more okay, sounds good. Good. So the next thing we're going to do, and this is really going to be more important later as we add more singers, is adjust the level of Ali's Ali's volume level as it compares to the track. So with one singer in, um, there's not a lot to go on as far as how loud she should be, but you can, you'll, you'll, it's kind of a bit of a trial and error. You'll, you'll get used to this process as you do more and more of it. But think, if you think sort of practically, this isn't going to be a solo. So you don't want her volume loud enough that it's just right out in front of the track the way you would if she were singing a solo. You're gonna want all four voices once they're combined to be at the level that the that the track is balanced with it, so you might want to have that first singer maybe a little quieter than seems natural to have when you're when you're only listening to one singer. With keeping in mind that as you add two, three, and now four voices, the cumulative sound of those four singers is going to be what sort of uh, comes together to rise above the accompaniment. Great. So I'm going to turn Allie down a little bit because it did sound like she was singing a solo there. I'll take her down to let's say 70% instead of 100% and listen. There is more Maybe even a touch more. I'll go, but we'll we'll adjust this more as we go along. You see so. the, the you just show them where that volume slider is. Oh yeah. Is. The volume slider is right under the track name. So Ali is here. Her volume is this slider right here. So I'm just clicking and dragging it around. It shows you the percentage. Um, it starts at 100%. You can go up to 500%. You really get a lot of gain going this way. If a, if a singer's track comes in too quiet, for example, which does happen plenty of times when you're recording on your phone, um, we don't have that problem today, but we're going to bring it down to 70% for now. And we'll, as you'll see, we're going to keep making more adjustments as we go. So let's, let's move along. Okay, so Allie is lined up timing wise. Now we need to reposition her and uh, resize her so she doesn't take up the whole screen. You can see in that preview window on the top right that she's taking up the full preview window and we want her to just take up one quadrant of that to make room for the rest of the quartet. So Matt's gonna transform that video to be smaller and move it into one of the corners. All right, this is kind of like where the magic happens but it's quite simple. I'm gonna double click on the thumbnail here. There's also a little pencil icon here for editing. It does the same thing. I'm going to double click and now I'm in the editor. 
um, this is how you edit this specific video clip. I'm specifically in the transform tab. There's a bunch of tabs here for editing different parameters, but we're really just gonna stick to transform. The scale is the size of the video. It might as well just say size here, but it's the scale of um, the original video, which it's set to one right now because it's at its full, it's at you know 100%, we didn't change it. It's not bigger than it came in or smaller. I'm gonna just drag this slider down and you get to see Ali shrink into a more appropriate size for this virtual choir. I'm gonna to go to 0 0.5 because I happen to, from doing this, know that 0 0.5 is the size that lets me um, fit all four singers on screen. So I drag the scale down and now in this preview window, I'm just gonna click and drag to move her into the quadrant I want. So let's say I'll put Ali in the bottom left. Okay. She's in position, she's at about the right size. Um, we can always go back and adjust her later if we decide to move her somewhere else. Um, and that's it, I'm gonna hit save changes. And now you can see we've got a little bit more real estate to work with for our next singer. So let's get to them. Yep, so now we're gonna bring Melissa down as the alto and we're gonna just repeat those steps. And basically three steps. We bring her down into the lane. We click, synchronize click her to and drag to release. Yep. We synchronize her with the accompaniment and then we resize the video. So this is gonna be an easy part to forget. If you don't see Melissa's audio, it's like, oh, you need the audio to do the synchronization. You click this sound icon and voila, here is Melissa's waveform. So you can see her clap is a little bit later as well. Um, this is where the zoom comes in really handy. If you put the play bar where you want to zoom in and then start zooming, it keeps that centered on screen for you. So she's got a long ways to go now. Uh, I'm gonna click her track, trim off the beginning. That part can be feel a little unintuitive, but it's easy. You're trimming, not moving. Um, and you know you're trimming because if you're on the very left edge of the video, you can see my arrow changes into a double arrow. Is that coming across clear on the zoom? Um, so you can see that the actual arrow changes to make the trim adjustment. And then to move her, I'm just clicking sort of anywhere on this thumbnail to move the video. And you can see the audio waveform moves with her. Um, I hope that's not too, too confusing. Um, now let's see how her clap lines up. Hey, nailed it. All right, I'm gonna zoom back out. I'm using this zoom feature a lot, which I recommend. It really helps you do the work, get a good view of what kind of work you're doing. I'm gonna zoom out. I'm gonna to skip to the third verse of this song just because I know that happens to be where um, Melissa is singing in harmony with Allie. And I'm gonna play it listening for a few things. Make sure the sync is good, the synchronization, which I think it will be because um, the clap was there. And then I'm going to listen to see how her balance is against Allie's as well. So we have one reference point other than the accompaniment now. Here I go. There is more joy. Not bad, it's a little alto heavy, I guess. Kind of, like Adam said, kind of hard to tell until more folks are in, but I'm gonna bring her back down to, let's say uh, 82%. Uh, it's a little bit arbitrary, but um, the synchronization felt really good. Um, her voice is beautiful, so it's a shame to turn it down. But um, yeah, and now uh, we're ready for the next step. All right, so Jim as our tenor will come down oh, next. Oh, actually, uh, we need to resize her first. Oh, um, right. So you can see in the preview window here, all we see is Melissa. We don't see Allie anymore. That's because the video tracks, the way they're set up, whatever track is above the previous one is sort of in front of it, visually speaking, um, which would be a problem, obviously, if we weren't resizing them, but we're gonna resize her so that she only is only taking up her quadrant. So same process, I double click, and as soon as I shrink her down, Allie will poke back through. See what I mean there? She's just in front of everything right now when she's full size. So I'm gonna bring her back down to 0 0.5. I'm gonna drag her into the, let's say just bottom right. And save it. Okay, so now we've got room to get some more singers in here. Um, I'll take Jim, bring him into the tenor track. I'm gonna go through this a little bit more quickly. Um, now that you get the process, we're really just repeating the same two or three tools that we've had. I put Jim in his place. 
I am clicking the sound icon to see his waveform. Nobody puts Jim in his place. <laughs> <laughs> I'm zoom. I was waiting for that. I'm zooming in, trimming off the beginning, not moving the video, but just trimming the video, getting rid of all the extra pre-roll. Now I'm clicking to move the video. I'm going to line up his clap with Melissa's clap. You can see at this point, I can't even see the accompaniment clap just because my screen real estate, I can scroll down to see it, but all these claps are getting lined up vertically. Um, and then give it a test. Okay. Very enthusiastic clap there, Jim. And I will click to this third verse because I want to hear them in harmony. There is more crazy and I think part of it is the performance and part of it is actually the synchronization. So I'm going to zoom way in because if you make an adjustment and you're not zoomed in, uh, it'll be a pretty big adjustment, but I'm going to zoom way in and just drag him just one click earlier. And see I'm, going to jump in for, I'm going to jump in for one second too because uh, a couple people are asking, seemed like the person's audio was out of sync with the video. That, that might just be that coming through Zoom, you're actually hearing and seeing with a slight delay of, of what Matt is, what's coming through Matt's computer. Um, the other thing is that we video being in the cloud every once in a while, the, what you're seeing and hearing might sort of seem off for a second as like a little glitch. Um, I don't know what causes it, if it's internet speed thing or whatever, but usually if you just stop it and start it again, it's it like just hit space bar to stop, to pause and space bar again to play that little like kind of adjustment gets made. So if what you're seeing and hearing isn't exactly lined up with each other, uh, like if you're seeing Jim sing and it doesn't seem like it's lined up with Jim's mouth, then that might just be coming through Zoom in a funky way right now. Yep. All right, um, and Jim was a little bit loud too, so I'm gonna turn him down. I'm gonna take Jim down to about 67, 66%. Let's see how that sounds. Um, I'll probably make some more adjustments when I put the bass in, but let's put Jim in his quadrant because right now he's covering everybody up. Um, so I double click. And Matt, as, you, as you do this, will you just do a quick demo of the cropping tool because someone yes, asked about it? For sure. So here is a, you can type into this scale area too instead of dragging the slider. I know I want everyone at 0.5 and putting him in his little quadrant. Now, let's say, for example, I had a quintet instead of a, a quartet, and I wanted to put three singers across the top. I wouldn't really have room, right? There's only room for about one more with these videos at the ratios they're at. So if I wanted to take the sides in on Jim and make him into a square or just make a little bit more room, I could click the crop tab up here. Next to transform is crop. And this allows you, and you. It's, I don't really like using the sliders over here. I prefer doing it on the video itself. You can just click, create your uh, exactly what crop you want. Make sure you see as much of Jim as you'd like and nothing else. Um, and then you can hit save changes. And then you can see there's room. I actually didn't move them over. Why don't I go ahead and do that? Like I said, you can always adjust this stuff after. I'm going to go back to the transform, slide them over here. So you can see pretty easily how you would make room for more singers. Um, and you can make the video much, much smaller too. If you have a choir of 30 people, you can do this in we video. Um, there is a limit to probably cloud uh, video editing, um, but I've, I've heard of people doing 60 singers in we video and getting them all in there. Um, so I'm gonna, un I'm going to uncrop Jim because for our video, we don't want him cropped. And I'm gonna slide him back like so. Okay, save changes. So like I said, anytime you make an edit, you can always go back and change it, fix it. Um, hey, I think we're on our last singer. Let's just breeze through Ben here. Ben gets to be on this top track. Repetitive, you may realize, especially as we're going um, through it fairly quickly, the steps start getting close together. They get easier every time you do it. Um, I want to zoom in over here. And I like to put the playhead right where I want to zoom in. I zoom in, 
I see Ben's clap. Look at that smirk. He knows he's going to get it. Then I trim off the beginning, slide him over, get the clap lined up, and play. Good job, Ben. Okay. I'm going to listen for a clap on Ben. <laughs> I'm gonna listen to uh, the, and if the clap ends up sounding a little bit out of sync, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do most of your fine adjustments based on the clap, because singers can clap a little bit off of the beat, or that someone comes in with the clap a little early or a little late. Really, you want the singing to be in sync, but the clap is just kind of the clearest reference point to get you in the ballpark. And now I'm going to the singing um, to make sure that it, uh, everything is sounding how I would like. Matt, when you go to trans. When you go to transform, Ben, just highlight where it is that you save the changes to that. Yep. There is more joy somewhere. There is more joy. Good. I'm going to turn Ben down a little bit. Um. More, somewhere. What do you think, Adam? How does this make Sorry, sense I'm, to you? I'm fielding questions in the chat. Well, use your ears, Adam. Come on. What's I'm just name? joking. Um, there is more nice. Okay, so I'm going to transform Ben, put him in his place. Here's the double click. Here's the scale slider, bringing it down to 0.5. It gets pretty obvious at this point where Ben goes. Click on the thumb, click on the video and drag it. And that's really it. It's just those two simple steps. Save changes is down here at the bottom of this tab. See it here? It's a little blue button. So I'm going to click Save Changes. And my quartet is now all in position. Um, let's listen to just a minute of it, or not even a minute, but just so you can kind of hear them all together while seeing them all. Because remember, whenever you put the new video in, it covers everything that you've done up, which feels a little scary if you don't know how to, uh, how to uncover it. So I'll press Play. There is more love Looking and sounding good. I'll skip to the end. Until I find you, I'm gonna keep on. I hope the audio is coming through clearly on Zoom. Sometimes it can feel a little uh, clunky. But one thing that is occurring to me is that um, they sound really good. And you may be thinking, like, did they record professionally? Um, they all recorded with phones. What makes it sound good is a couple things. One thing, phone microphones are getting really good. Like they just are. They have great compressors on them. They know how to filter background noise automatically at this point, depending on how up to date your phone is. But it doesn't take the br most brand new iPhone to get a pretty good signal now. And the other thing is the accompaniment tracks are really beautiful and professionally recorded. And that just provides that kind of professional sound underneath the singers you would be surprised at what a huge difference it makes to just have that um, high quality sound as part of your mix, which is obviously what you get with these kits. And I'd say most kits have some version of that. Some of, a lot of them are just piano. Um, ours, we've done a lot of like orchestral arrangements for them or a jazz piano trio with bass and drums and, um, you know, depending on the style of the piece. So the professional accompaniment track goes a long way to make everybody sound good. Um, right. So now that the quartet is in place and they're all, all the singing is done. The next thing we would do normally in a in a uh, video editing like this is use the musical introduction to put in text, a title screen. And if you'll just show them where the text is, like where the text is in we video for you to choose to to place. Sure. I don't think I think we should actually skip over this for now because it is included in the longer tutorial yeah. that we sent a link to and we only have about 15 minutes left i think that it might be more valuable to answer some specific questions but know that you can do title screens and texts and credits and things like that in we video there's a bunch of different you know some dynamic animated text some just sort of plain jane uh, white text on a black background but it's all in this one tab up at the top next to the media browser this tab right here that says text you click on it, it has a bunch of, you can just kind of scroll through and see the thumbnails to see basically what the, the flavor of what you're getting. Um, and the only thing you need to know is you have to create a new video track to put your text on. So it's as simple as just take, picking one that you like. Yeah, the text it needs its own lane basically so that it can rise above the videos and go on top of either the black background or the videos or the background that's supplied by the text itself. 
So you can see now that I've put it on here, if I play the video, you see the text, not the singers, until that clip disappears. There is more love. So obviously we would want to edit that, but uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward and it's in our longer video. Great. And then once that's all those little details are trimmed up to beginnings with the credits and the end, which you probably trim the ends of these singers videos off after they're done. So you're not, so they're not all staggered. Um, we'll skip that part now. Again, it's, that's in the longer, the longer tutorial if you want those finishing details, um, but rather leave time for some questions. Matt, just show them how to finish, how sure. to like export this so that it can get out. Let me YouTube. just talk for 30 seconds about one trimming thing that's very important, which is you'd obviously want to trim the clap off of everybody's tracks, right? Like you don't want this the sound of any of this to start with one, two, three, clap. Um, so that's just like trimming the excess off before. You just trim everything to where you want it to start and keep them synchronized. You don't move them, you just go to the very edge and you trim. So for Melissa's track, I'm just gonna trim to here and then probably all the other ones to match. Same with the accompaniment track. You trim the clap off of it. We included it there to get things synchronized, but then you wanna get rid of it in the editing, which is a pretty quick little swipe. So uh, now that it's all done, let's say it's all done. We're probably 10 minutes away from this being actually perfectly finished. Um, is clicking the finish button. You click finish, you choose a name for your piece. There is more love with the pod squad singers set. Then they have a bunch of options for you here. You can do an audio only version if you want to do that for some reason. So you could use this as audio software, but we're going to do a video. We could switch it to HD, which will give you a little bit better quality. It also takes a little longer to render. And then your destinations here um, are a lot of helpful things. The one to the left is a download link, which is probably what a lot of folks would want, just so you have the video on your hard drive. It'll send you an email um, with your video. Um, after that, you can go right to Google Drive, which can be really handy if that's how you're sharing information. You can go directly to YouTube. You would link your YouTube account after you press that. You can go directly to Dropbox, uh, OneDrive, Vimeo, which is like a YouTube alternative. So I'm gonna just click this and press export and it's off and it's doing its thing. It's gonna say, you can close this window. We don't need you to keep the window open. The video is going. One important part of this is now that we're exporting it, it doesn't mean that we can't edit it anymore. Obviously this export is gonna be at whatever progress we were at, but if you export the video and realize there's kind of something um, screwed up at the beginning or you wanna go make an edit, the, something about the sound um, at the end you weren't prepared for, whatever it is, like you're never happy with your final project, right? You can go back and just start editing it again. Your edit will just stay wherever you left it. So you could go back to Wii Video, see the project you're working on, work on another edit and export the, uh, the result. So this is gonna take a couple minutes. I'm gonna stop my share because um, that's really the end of the video editing demonstration. Yeah, and at that point you're ready to share and that that is either through one of the ways that Matt just showed you on Wii Video with the YouTube and stuff, but you're done. You made a virtual yeah. choir. Yeah, you can see the, the steps to make the virtual choir, the actual video editing are pretty few steps that you need and then you just repeat them for every singer. <laughs> Wow, you guys, that was amazing. I mean, it- Who said it, we couldn't do this in 90 minutes? Come on. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, that was, that was really great. And we've got so many excellent questions here. We've got a ton of questions. So I will ask everybody right now, if there are questions you absolutely want answered here, please upvote them because we are starting from the top. There are 90 questions in here right now that we have not answered. And can so I also far. just put our, we'll put the Pod Brothers uh, email address in the chat too. So if sure. things don't get answered, we're really happy to help um, after. So I'll put that in the chat while we're while we're doing that this. That is super generous of you. Thank you. And I think this is this is just such been such a great thing. So okay, I'm going to start at the top here. So. We've already kind of talked about this first one. Will you address equipment needed? So I think you guys talked about that. You talked about the various types of equipment. Um, anything else you want to say about that? Yeah, the basic yeah. idea is that for you, for the virtual choir thing, it's actually the phones do as good of a job as kind of any uh, affordable equipment. At a certain point, you can buy microphones for hundreds of dollars to make your to, for your singer to record with that sounds better. 
But for what most of us are here to do, which is create a virtual choir out of a, a big group where that's not going to be realistic to expect of multiple people, then you just really want a smartphone or a tablet or something that can record in the with using the camera function of that. And, and that, I will just say, even with the the equipment you have, phones do a better job than computers with everything on the recording front. The microphone on your phone is better than the microphone on your computer. The camera on your phone is better than the camera on your computer, with very few exceptions. Correct. <laughs> um, definitely. Okay. So now there's that question about making an audio virtual choir. So and it says perhaps accompanied by a still photo of your choir. Yeah. So let me say that I think this is a great idea. <laughs> it's a lot easier and uh, I wouldn't do it the way we just did it necessarily with this with this kit. You could use the kit as the guide and do that kind of thing, but I wouldn't bring it all into we video even necessarily to do that. I might use a more audio specific software if that's all you're messing with is the audio like Soundtrap or sound or band lab and have the students record using just the voice memo function on their phone instead of the camera function um obviously okay. we can't go through an audio tutorial at this point but i think it's a great idea and what it also saves you from doing is i mean it saves you from a bunch of video editing um but if you actually don't even put the picture of your choir on it. If you just put a, an audio file onto your website, your school's choir boosters website or something, and it's just a play playback of audio, then you don't need the sync license. The sync license is really specific to a visual synced to audio. It's a little bit of a confusing and out, outdated issue that uh, Andrea knows more about than any of us, um, but you don't need a sync license to upload audio only. But but you need a mechanical license then because right. you're you need an audio recording. <laughs> right. So it's, it's a different thing and it, and it yeah. simplifies some of it. And the mechanical licenses are easier to track down because they're not up yeah. to the, they're not at the whim of the copyright holder. There's and I, I also want to jump in to say that our specific kits um, are all music that you don't need to track down either of these license. Consider the kit coming with the license. The mm -hmm. songs are songs that we have either procured the licenses to or are public domain, like we've taken care of it. You don't need to worry a single thing about licenses. You could put the videos anywhere and everywhere and you're covered. I think that's awesome. Yeah, yep. very cool. Um, okay, next question. Are there kits for songs in unison for elementary choirs? You betcha. <laughs> um, so actually, let me just throw up real quick here um, the titles that we have. We don't have a ton of titles because these are obviously time intensive to make the kits um, yeah. because we're arranging a song and creating recordings with professional singers and arrange and you know recording the orchestra, all that stuff. Um, so here is what we have available. Okay. Yeah. Um, here are the titles that are available from Pod Brothers, and every single title here comes in SATB, SAB, uh, SA, like two parts. That's sort of intense. It's like intended for treble voices. So you could do it with a women's choir in just two parts, but it is pretty well oriented towards that level of learning as well. Um, where you or might have the, a treble choir. Yeah, the ranges and the complications have like have like children's choir in mind in as mind. a very big part of the audience um, for the two part and unison so they there's unison versions of all of this including the hallelujah chorus which is a riot if you ever want to give it a shot um but the unit the unison guide videos don't come with just the score and the audio in addition to that they have large print text over the score sort of above it in case you have um folks that just aren't really used to reading music or the text seems small they don't really need the notes because they're just learning by ear so you have big purple text for just reading uh, reading lyrics, almost a little bit more karaoke style. So all of these titles um, are, and let me just go through them real quick. Hallelujah Chorus, we even have an adapted Hallelujah Chorus that's shorter and a little bit lower. We have Ombra My Fu, which is a beautiful soprano solo, um, soprano aria from Handel's Xerxes, but we've turned it into a choir piece. Um, there's, there's More Love Somewhere, which you know intimately now. Over My Head is a really fun spiritual. You might know it as Up Above My Head. Um, it gets like a real gospel groove going. It was a great gospel band on that track. Then Risen Today and Joyful Joyful is a little Easter mashup medley of Christ the Lord is Risen Today and Joyful Joyful We Adore Thee. And we've sort of uh, partnered them. So they even kind of interact with each other in kind of a clever way. And then it had, and that's got a big orchestral brass, you know, Easter sound. Um, and then It Had to Be You 
and you made me love you two jazz standards it had to be you um is uh, the one that's featured in when harry met sally if you know that movie um it's a great tune and uh it's got like a lot more jazz flavor in the recording and in the arrangement in that one and then uh in the the red and green here are sacred and secular holiday selections you probably won't need that for a while but we've got a bunch of those as well <laughs> very cool um so i did just post a link in the chat uh there was a question here about having um more diverse composers and i did post the link to all of our uh, virtual choir kits and you will find there is a variety of uh, titles and uh, types of kits and as well as a diverse uh, array of composers represented there so please do check that out uh okay next question okay if we were, if, if we were fraternal twins would that count more toward the diversity angle instead of identical? <laughs> i don't think so <laughs> um how long are your licenses good for? Forever. Ever. Oh, forever. Wow. Because I know that's different with every publisher. Like, I, for instance, uh, in the webinar we did just recently with Hal Leonard, they, most of theirs are good for a year. But if you need them longer, they're willing to work with you. So if you guys do it for a year, for forever, that's amazing. Forever. So, yeah. Unless, yeah, yeah. If, if that were to change, it would. I can't even imagine the circumstances. Things, <laughs> songs would have to be removed from the public domain somehow. So you're good. Well, there you go. Okay, awesome. Um, let's see. Uh, here's one from Ted. I'm exporting from iMovie. When the result is played from church over Zoom, the video seems slow, delayed, or halting. How do I improve video speed? Yeah, this is more of a Zoom issue than an iMovie issue, and some people yeah. have had have had luck by clicking the optimize for video box when they do their screen share there's a little checkbox at the bottom you can try that um, if you have a broadband connection available and so like an ethernet connection instead of wi-fi but zoom is just unfortunately not great for sharing super high def yeah. video i do this for i'm a music director at a church and i do this every week i produce these beautiful high quality stereo lush mixed and like you know 1080p videos and then i watch them back on the zoom recording after i'm like well there goes all the all the like the shine on that one and there's just yeah. unfortunately at the moment zoom has been getting a little better and a little bit better but as far as streaming that stuff but it's more of a zoom issue and there's not yeah. a ton youtube of youtube does a good job though if you end up posting it to share later it can Right. That's what I do is quality. I put everything that I want to put on Zoom up on YouTube and I say, if you want to watch this in full quality, here's a link to the YouTube version and people can go watch it again. Well, later. and I know some people said that um, that the screens were blurry when they were watching them. And I think that's exactly because of what you said. It was just yep. a streaming thing. It has to do with network speeds. It has right. to do It could be your internet speed. It could be the host's internet speed or the person who's I sharing. Mean, I am home today, so. <laughs> right. Well, I just mean like whoever's sharing, it could be theirs or yours. You never yeah. know which. And then, it really good. So the video that we're doing right now, hopefully will come up a little better for you on the screen. So you can check that out when you get that. Um, the next question is really good. Uh, how do you convince all your singers to participate in these kinds of projects? Some people are daunted by technology. It's a really good question. And it's yeah. actually one of the things that we've uh, talked a lot about with uh, the directors that sort of inspired some of these kits to begin with is making the experience everything before like as you notice the organizer's job we've made it very easy and very uh hands off if you want it to be like it could be a rehearsal free process just like here's your materials send them on back but we found a lot more success depending on the choir with trying to create a meaningful experience going into it and that might mean more rehearsal than is actually required but just to get your community back together like get your people together and have a zoom rehearsal and do breakout rooms just even for the social aspect i mean this obviously could be different depending on like if you're working with kids or adults but trying to create some meaning where you're watching virtual choirs together that's something you can do together on zoom is like is watch things even though we can't sing together and stay synchronized you can talk about what was powerful about one performance or another or the video editing um you can try to get into the history of the pieces a couple of our pieces are spirituals there's a lot of rich history to get into there the hallelujah chorus trying to make it a little bit more of a uh, enriched experience that's not just like here's your links bye um so <laughs> it, it makes a big difference though people want to feel like they're part of something and uh, and it's sort of your job as the director to find a new way to make that happen. Um, that said, a lot of people are kind of zoomed out and don't want to spend more time with their technology. And that's fair too. It's, it could be just, uh, you know, a, not an easy sell for some folks at this point in the pandemic. 
Yeah. All right. We're going to keep going. We've only got time for a couple more questions. So I am going to kind of pick and choose here um, because some of these we're just going to answer later. Um, uh, can it be earbuds as opposed to headphones? Of yes, course. Yeah. Yep. yeah, absolutely. Uh, hold on. Answer live done. Uh, if you have singers who don't want their video to show, can you import their video submission as an audio track? Enter shy eighth graders. <laughs> you can, you could bring their video. I mean, they could just send you an audio track instead of a video for one. And then you could just you, drop that in. Or if they actually do send you a video, but then say later, I don't want to be seen. You could put their video on a video track, just like we did with the others. And then you could transform them right off of the screen so that you don't see them or shrink them down to zero percent but so you'll still hear their track but you won't see their actual video that's kind of cool that's very kind of cool um how do they get their mp4 recording from their cell phone uploaded to their desktop and how do they send it to you via the dropbox so the dropbox file request we went over we went through quickly because it's cumbersome technology stuff to start describing from scratch but our so there's different ways people share these big files google drive google classroom we're not going to get into which one is better for which because it's so specific and so it could literally be a whole webinar on how to share files yeah. using and, Dropbox. you know maybe that's something we do if there is yeah. something that we've talked about that you want to hear more about that's what that question is for yeah. us today but i do want to say to the to just to the dropbox file request piece specifically yeah. our kit in the organizers document i think that was step three or something where it says collect your files we do lay out just because we use dropbox for 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 when we're doing it we do lay out the very specifics of how to set up your dropbox file request we don't show you how to do it in google classroom and all the other ways but we we picked one that we thought would be good and the detailed explanation of how to do that is in the kit it's just like you just as an organizer you just scroll and you follow the directions and then you get to the part where it says set up your dropbox file requests and the instructions are just there one one after the other step by step okay i know i'm going through some of this because we've added we've added or we've answered a lot of these questions here uh what about eq and reverb levels eq and reverb levels is an audio thing and we we chose this um sort of method to make it the fewest steps for like sort of the widest audience of people who wanted who were probably most daunted by this process um but i saw other questions like that can i use soundtrap and logic pro and GarageBand to do the audio separately the short answer to that is yes if you're comfortable using audio software you can mix the audio having nothing to do with we video like you can do the sort of a mix just all the audio, including the accompaniment track and everything on your own in some outside program. Obviously, we didn't do that today. Um, and then you can bring that final mix into we video. And then when you bring your when you bring your singers onto their tracks, you would just turn their volumes all the way down because you're already hearing them from your outside mix that you created. So and that's the reason where you would we, get into the, and reverb and stuff. The reason we didn't get into a lot of audio stuff too is because we really don't with these virtual choirs, we don't want the perfect to be the enemy of the good right now. It's like, yes, there is more steps. There's so many more things you could do and get into the really into the weeds with even creating a stereo image where your sopranos are to the left and your altos are centered and then your tenors are over here you can do all of that but if that's going to stop you from making the video to begin with then take it off the table they sound good when you just get the video tracks in there and mixed well so audio is another topic and there's actually a lot of good youtube um videos about this now there's so many tutorials popping up because so many people are doing this but um yeah adding reverb sweetens the sound taking some of the high end off on the EQ can also get some of the phone sound out of it to give a really short answer. Oh, goodness. All right. This is excellent. So we are out of time. We're out of time um, and we still have 108 open things. Oh my goodness. Um, we'll expect 108 emails since we put those. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to attempt to answer some of these too. Um, and we'll just do the best we can. Thank you so, so much guys. I really, this was really fun. I'm so glad. Can I just make an invitation to everybody who's here to please stay in touch with us? We're thinking about putting up a gallery on our website of people who've used these kits so we can kind of show off all these awesome. We've gotten so many amazing heartwarming messages from 
choirs and choir directors. And I, I'm, uh, I was about to retire next year and I never used my computer for anything like this before. And I bought your kit and I put this thing together with these with a senior citizens choir that had not sung together in a year. And thank you so much. And then they send us the video and it's amazing. It's, it's great. It's so fun to watch these. Aww. And we'd love to see all of yours. Um, so we want you to stay in touch with us. We obviously want you to get what you need from us at JW Pepper. If you want to get one of these kits, go get it there. Um, but I'm also going to put our website and our Facebook, which you can just follow our Pod Brothers um, Facebook page in the chat here. And the website has like the band that Matt and I co-lead this fun jazz band. You can find some other media of us playing forehand piano and cute twin music, stuff like that. Um, but also you can find out what we're up to in our latest projects. And on Facebook, if you follow us, we'll obviously keep you up to date on our latest releases, new arrangements, uh, fun goings on. And we'll answer your questions there. If you can get in touch with us, either the email address or these things, um, we're so excited to be part of this choral community sort of in, on this level for the first time in our in our lives so well we're we're super excited to bring you into it i think this is you guys are a great addition <laughs> and i have to um uh, i have to say that i do love listening to your music is it mimi and the pod brothers that's yeah. right we have a band love mimi it. and the pod brothers where <laughs> we're very good we're, we're two-thirds of it as you can probably guess <laughs> so hey matt anything you want to add uh, no, I, th I think we covered it all other than that there are a couple new releases planned. So stay in touch on that front. Um, the, the one thing that I, that I think I should plug since we, none of the arrangements currently come in SSA, but I got so many uh, angry emails from my SSA choir friends that they're like, you got to have something for women's choir or children's choir right. trouble. So, <laughs> so we actually, we, we've got two ready where they're in the, in the, uh, in the shop right now being recorded by our singers. So there's two SSA arrangements coming out in a, probably in about a week. Excellent, excellent. All right, well, this was such a treat. I really- And please tell your friends, this music is going well. So we want everyone to know about it. Tell your friends if one of these kits worked for you. And we will have this recording sent out to you tomorrow. Um, so watch your email for that. There'll be a link to the certificate of participation and also to the video. And, uh, and I will try to include a bunch of the links that we also had here today, because some people have asked for these links. So don't worry if you didn't copy them down, you'll get them tomorrow. Um, I think that's it. That's so great. thank you both so much. Yeah, it's thanks for pleasure. having us. And thanks. if anyone wants any other events or they want to hear anything else from the Pod Brothers, please give us your feedback in our survey and we'll see what we can do. All right, okay. thanks bye -bye. so much guys.